Welcome to video two of our basic Skywarn training, the online version. Let's get into the different types of thunderstorms. We begin with the basic single cell storm with a weak updraft and just a slight threat for producing severe weather. The multi-cell cluster has a moderate threat for producing severe weather. The multi-cell line, better known as the squall line, also has a moderate threat to produce severe weather. The supercell has an intense updraft and also a mesocyclone, which is a rotating updraft. The supercell has a very high threat for producing severe weather and even tornadoes. Notice how this single cell storm has a bubbly nature to it and also how it tends to be straight up and down in the vertical. In other words, it does not tilt to either side. Being straight in the vertical will reduce the storm's chance of lasting a long time as the updraft and downdraft will mix together and choke themselves out. So here's the life cycle of a typical single cell storm. Normally, if this storm produces any severe weather, it will be isolated downbursts in the form of small hail and heavy rain. The storm is often disorganized in nature, and it has a low degree or predictability of severe events. Tornado potential is very low. Hail of any size is reportable, and we urge you to report any hail to the National Weather Service in Binghamton. For instance, if you see one quarter inch hail that is about the size of a pea, hail can range all the way up to a quarter, which is around an inch, or even a softball, which is around four and a half inches. Here's an example of three inch hail collected in South Osceola, New York on June 9, 2011. Moving on to multi-cell storms and lines, there is moderate wind shear in these storms and this can cause these storms to tilt slightly. Multi-cells which train or move over the same area again and again can produce flash flooding. Here's an example from Penyan from May of 2014. Notice how the water was so strong that it actually scoured away a portion of road. So what defines flash flooding? Flash flooding is significant, something which is rarely seen. For instance, if you see flooding under an underpass in an area where the road dips down, an area which often collects water whenever it rains hard, this isn't actually flash flooding. This is basically just urban or nuisance type flooding. Another example could be storm drains clogging up with leaves, and this causes also nuisance flooding of roadways. Now sometimes this water can cause real world effects in which it runs into people's basements. This isn't actually flash flooding though. An example of flash flooding is when a stream rises completely out of its banks, or when a road completely washes away. So if you observe flash flooding, please tell us. Compare it to an obstacle. For instance, a car. Is the water up to the tires, up to the doors, up to the roof? Are roads washed out and impassable? Please tell us all observations which you can make for the flash flooding situation. If you own a rain gauge, rainfall reports can be extremely useful to us. Rainfall amounts of an inch or greater in 24 hours or less, or a half an inch of rain or more in an hour or less, are the most important of observations. Rainfall reports help us to confirm how the radar is doing with estimation. We also urge you, if you have an ability to report rain and snow on a consistent basis, to consider cocoa rise. You can learn more about Coco Raz by visiting them at www.cocoraz.org. More training can be found online, and this is an ideal way for people who wish to record their weather every day. Now we've talked about multi-cell storms and when they form into lines to form squall lines. 
A special version of the squall line is called the bow echo. Take a look at this radar depiction of a bow echo and notice how the leading storms shoot way out ahead of the storms which are to the north and to the south. The reason this happens is very strong winds are coming behind the storms and are pushing the lead storms out ahead of the other storms. Therefore, bow echoes are associated with very strong straight line wind damage. Most squall lines will be accompanied by a shelf cloud, which marks the leading edge of intense precipitation and wind. The radar shows how the storms look like to us when we're looking at them on radar. And in the lower right corner, if you're in the field, that's what a shelf cloud will look like as the squall line approaches. We like to say the worst is first when it comes to squall lines, meaning that the strong winds tend to strike first, and then the rain and hail comes afterwards. Here is an animated version of a strong shelf cloud moving over open terrain. Notice the dust as it kicks up underneath the shelf cloud. This is indicative of very strong winds at the surface. In this case, the winds could be at 60 to 80 miles per hour or even stronger. Winds of this magnitude are often mistaken as tornadic. A downburst or microburst can produce wind speeds as high as 80 to 100 miles per hour. The damage can be as bad or worse than some of the tornadoes which tend to occur in New York and Pennsylvania. Take a look at the picture which shows microburst damage from Camillus, New York in July of 2014. Another example is the very strong microburst which hit the Cortland, New York waterworks in 1986. If you experience wind damage in your area, please be as specific as you possibly can about the type of damage which has been observed. For instance, are trees or power lines down? How many trees are down? Was the tree already dead? If it was a very strong wind, do you have any damage to buildings? For instance, are windows blown out? Are roofs blown off? Can you estimate the wind speeds?